We've been talking a lot over the last couple of videos about first order linear differential equations. We know what they look like and, and all that good stuff, but we haven't really looked yet as to how you would solve a first order linear differential equation. And that's what we're going to first explore uh, in, in this video here. Uh, now, I'll warn you up front that this video is a little technical. This is one of the, the more complicated videos that we'll do in this chapter. Uh, so just hang with me and try to follow what I'm doing here. If you need to watch the video more than once, then that, that's fine too. Um, but we're just going to kind of explain this, you know, kind of a, as we go. So, um, so here, anyways, here we go. All right, so we know what a first order linear differential equation looks like. It's um, first order, so there's only a y prime, and you can kind of put it in this template, if you will. It's dy dx plus a function of x times y, and anyone who doesn't have a y prime or a y gets put on the right hand side, which would be just a function of x, so there's no, no y's in that. Another thing that's important is the coefficient of the y prime needs to be 1. You can't have any extra terms out here. If you do, you should divide the whole equation through by that term so that your coefficient is 1 again. Uh, so anyway, this will be our starting point always for, uh, for these guys here. All right, now um, here's, here's the main observation as to, as to um, you know, how we're going to go about solving these guys. L look at the left-hand side, if you would. You have uh, dy dx, that's a derivative, plus p of x times y. This vaguely reminds me of something, and, and see if it reminds you of something. Uh, if I'm going to add in a 1 out front here. I know that's peculiar, but uh, if you had a blank times blank, plus blank times blank, and one of these terms has a derivative, does that kind of hint at something to you? Maybe, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But um, even if it doesn't, what it kind of feels like to me a little bit vaguely is the product rule. You have a term times the derivative of y plus another term times the original y. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. That that whole that whole feel to it. Now you may not have noticed that, and that's okay. I, I don't know if I would have noticed that if somebody had not shown that to me before. But that that's the the main heart of solving linear differential equations is noticing that when you have a y prime and a y with addition, it just feels like the product rule. Now there are still some issues. Um, that we have to work through, but but this is going to lead to our answer. So just hang hang with me here. Now there's a small problem in considering this as the uh, the product rule or, or what have you. Um, even if you consider this to be a one out front here, you've got the derivative of y times an expression plus y times p of x. Now, the problem to me is not the y and the y prime. That would very naturally be in a product rule. You would write dy, I'm sorry, let me back that up here real quick. Uh, we would write the derivative with respect to x of some mystery product. One of these terms could easily be y because you have the derivative of y times an expression plus y times some other expression. But who in the world is this guy? Um, and furthermore, I don't think one would necessarily, uh, or I don't think p of x would necessarily be the derivative of one or vice versa or anything like that. These guys don't necessarily have to be related to one another in a, a derivative type fashion. So that, that's going to be the biggest hang up with, with this um, current kind of train of thought. So here's what we're going to do. We've got a fix. There's, a, there's something that we can do to, to make this work. We're going to make it work. Um, the fix is this. We're going to multiply through the entire differential equation by what's called an integrating factor. This is a common vocabulary word, and you should be familiar with it. It's called integrating factor. And different textbooks use different letters. Um, this is probably one of the more common ones. This is called mu of x. That's spelled M-U, mu of x. Uh, some some calculus textbooks will just simply say the letter u of x. It doesn't really matter to me which letter you call it, but um, most textbooks call it one of this uh, one of these two. Now, w what this guy does, what his job is, is uh, he's he's first of all not firmly um, chosen yet, and so what his job is is to fix this 
such that uh, in such a way that one of these guys is the derivative of the other. And so the product rule will, in, in fact, come into effect and we can proceed. All right, so there's still some questions, but again, just hang with me. We're going to multiply through by this mystery guy. Who he is, we don't know yet, but I'm going to multiply through every expression by it. All right, now, if this really is the product rule, then what I really need is I need uh, basically uh, this guy's derivative to be this guy. And remember, that's still a possibility because mu of x is not firmly chosen yet. I can, I can almost find what mu of x should be such that this would, would happen. Okay, so, so here's what I want. So we need, here's what we need. We need the derivative of mu to match mu of x times p of x. And if that did happen, then we would have this, this um, product rule concept uh, kind of going on here. So uh, anyways, if we need this to happen and mu of x is not firmly defined yet, then we can actually solve for what mu of x needs to be. So let, let's see if we can do that. Let's um, simplify this language by dropping all the x's just temporarily. Let's just call it mu prime equals mu times p. And notice this guy right here, this is a differential equation in its own right. And furthermore, it's separable. I love separable differential equations. They're very easy to solve. You remember them. We separate the variables and then we integrate both sides. So let's move this guy to the left. We'll have mu prime over mu equals P. All right, so now uh, let's integrate both sides. We'll integrate the left side and we'll integrate the right side. Uh, I think you'll notice that the, uh, the left side becomes the natural log of the absolute value of mu. And that's going to equal um, the integral of P for short. And I'm not even going to put on a plus C. If there was plus a generic constant, we'll just let that constant be zero um, for, for now. So I, I'm not even going to put the plus C. Okay, now check this out. I can actually solve for mu of x. This is going to be huge. So mu, and now I'll put the x's back in here, mu of x, mu of x will be equal to e. Now where did e come from? Well, notice to solve for uh, mu, the natural log is currently in the way. We would raise e to the left-hand side, and it would equal e raised to the right-hand side. That's where this is coming from. So mu of x would equal e raised to the integral of p of x. Okay. Now this is this is the key thing I want you to highlight. Mark uh, on your paper. Put it, put a highlighter around it. This is the, the most important thing you'll see in this video. This guy right here. This guy is called the integrating, I think I gave you the vocab word earlier, the integrating factor. This guy cures all our problems, okay? His job is to uh, fix the differential equation in such a way such that the left-hand side looks like the product rule. It's a very strange little expression, but um, given a particular differential equation, if I back up here, given a differential equation like this, then you can find mu of x by taking whatever this guy is, the co which is the coefficient of y, and doing e raised to the integral of whatever that function is. It's gonna look peculiar, but it's uh, really amazing how the math works out cleanly. And we'll do an example coming up shortly, but, um, but for now, just, just jot this down if you don't mind. Okay, so here's your integrating factor. And, uh, and let's just see how everything plays out. Okay, so if that is your integrating factor, then we'll it, remember that was the solution to this little intermediate differential equation we stumbled across and mu prime would in fact be mu of x times p of x which means when you take that differential equation we had earlier this guy right here can be labeled a different way who is mu of x times p of x well hey that's the same thing as mu prime so i can cut him out and we will paste mu prime in his place so this is your differential equation. And because this relationship is satisfied, we have this right here going on. Uh, now notice, look, look at the, uh, the left-hand side now. We have mu of x times y prime plus mu prime times y. 
That's the product rule, and that fits absolutely perfectly. And so what is this? This is the derivative of what product exactly? Well, mu times y. And sure enough, check it out. We have the derivative of the second times the first plus the first, the second times the derivative of the first. It's exactly the, the classic product rule here. Okay, so that's the left hand side, and obviously it still equals the right hand side. And, uh, and notice, I, I now for the very first time see my answer. This guy is the solution to the differential equation right there. That's him. Uh, if you look all the way back at the original differential equation, what is the solution to any differential equation? It's the y such that if you replace the y and the uh, appropriate y prime in the differential equation, it makes the equation true, obviously. And this is my very first time seeing a possibility for solving for y. Okay, so here he is. And now it's just some basic algebra to solve for y. So look at this equation right here. What algebra steps would be required to solve for y? I see two things. On the one hand, I'd love to get rid of this derivative. So to get rid of that, I will integrate both sides. Okay, so y of x to solve for that, we would have the integral of mu of x times q of x dx. Now, after that integral is done, I will have a plus c, which I will go ahead and write. All right, so I have that plus c after I'm finished. Now, the last step, even once the, um, the derivative is gone because we integrated, you still have this mu of x right here. So the very last step is I will divide both sides by mu of x. So I have 1 over mu of x times all of this previous stuff. Okay, It looks complicated. Um, this is your solution. It's equal to these things. And we solved a first order linear differential equation. As complicated as this sounds, in practice is actually not that bad. And I know you're probably not believing me, but if you hang with me and wait till, till I do an example of this, I, I think you'll see that this is in fact pretty straightforward once you found mu of x. So, so now, now here's a question you might be asking yourself, Devin, do I have to understand every detail that you just said here to do any of these problems? Not exactly. The one detail that you do need that you couldn't do without is this guy right here. If you don't know this is the definition of an integrating factor and you don't know once you find him to distribute him through both sides of the, uh, of the differential equation, then no, you couldn't solve these. But if you know just those two basic facts, you, you can still solve a, a linear differential equation, even if you don't understand all the details of how it worked out. Okay, so, so don't, don't stress too much. All right, now we're going to uh, go ahead and you can go on to the next video and we'll actually work one of these guys out.